my brothers and sisters as you can hear i have a throat infection but that having been said i think it's important that i share with you my experience regarding this topic of unity and alhamdulillah allah has bestowed upon us all many favors one of the favors that i have been blessed with is that i have traveled to many communities many countries and i've noticed a few things and i've taken a lot from the societies and communities that i've met but to start off with i'd like to mention that we always confuse unity and uniformity the two are very different as muslims we think that unity is uniformity if you are like me then i'm like you then i like you as well and that's not how it's supposed to be because if you take a look at a school we have a uniform that means everyone must wear the same thing but if you take a look at the unification of all the schools put together they all have different uniforms but they play together they get along they play against each other but they love each other and they do it in a way that brings about a beautiful upbringing for one and all so the point being raised is you do not have to be like someone in order to be united with them you have to understand that each individual will definitely be different the quran has addressed this from so many angles there is the relationship that was being spoken about moments ago that i wanted to actually expand on and that is the relationship we have with the non muslims do you realize that in most cases it is better than the relationship we have with muslims of a different sect and this is something we need to admit because the way we get along with the jews the christians the hindus perhaps the those who follow other faiths even the atheists sometimes the dealings and the respect we have for one another is such that amongst those who share the shahada we don't have that and there is a reason for this the reason is shaitan is very very active and we don't realize we fall in his trap very quickly by picking on matters and thinking that if someone does not have the same thinking of mine then that's it they are someone who needs to be labeled now why i say this is because from my travels i've realized one main point that has a very very powerful impact on the community that i visited and i can see it what is it protection of the tongue protection of the tongue this is something i've realized that those communities who do not speak ill about others they are the happiest they are the most connected to each other they get along with their differences in the most beautiful way but those who bad mouth one another they are the ones whom at a certain point it becomes killing and i'm not joking killing if you call me a kafir or i call you a kafir it seems like it might be light whereas it is the worst thing that could ever be said it is the heaviest statement you could ever make and it will result in killing 10 years from today it has to there is no way out because it has a connotation it has something that comes behind it it's too heavy it's very heavy it's a statement that is never to be uttered against a person who shares the shahada with you no matter what your difference is thereafter and it is not one single group that is guilty of this wallahi almost every group does this you know i laugh sometimes because i have a lot of friends and mashallah tabarakallah i have friends who think very differently from me too mashallah and we get along very well and we discuss matters sometimes very respectfully and we agree that we disagree on certain matters alhamdulillah but the beauty is we all have our little groups we all have our chat groups we all have facebook and instagram and whatever else it is and did you know that you will be shocked you will be shocked to know that people who are with you send screenshots of what you have said about someone else straight to that person straight to that person and you won't realize that this person actually knows everything that's been happening behind the scenes and how they've been labeled this and they've been called that and this is and then we expect to forge a unity that doesn't happen i'm speaking about the quran 
And I want to tell you, whatever I'm saying now can be found in Surah Al-Hujurat. It's one of the only surahs when you, on its own, if you are to take it, and you have to go back and read it. I'm not going to do the tafsir of it today. That's the homework we need to have. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how we should protect ourselves from harming one another. Whether it's backbiting, calling names, bad names, whatever I'm saying is based on Surah Al-Hujurat. For us, it is a charter to live by. We have to live by this beautiful surah and we have to learn to respect one another. So what we need to realize is the practical solutions. Point number one, learn to say good things about people behind their backs. It sounds very simple, but it's the most difficult thing to do. Learn to say good things about people behind their backs. I remember there are so many instances where people come to me to try and say something bad about someone else. And instead of me saying that bad, I guide him to say, my brother, this is not needed. If you want to do something, do something good and walk away. The ummah is looking at its leaders for guidance, not for misguidance. The ummah is looking at its leaders for ways of, le of living with one another. Uh, we have a short span of time on earth. We do not have a long span of time. So if the leaders themselves were to guide one and all as we are trying to achieve today to say my brothers and sisters that's exactly what we are brothers and sisters we will have differences you know for example there was once a brother who came to me and showed me a clip of people doing something and told me isn't this a bidah and i said my brother yes this may not be substantiated according to the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but what you're about to do with this information can either make the ummah or break the ummah. Remember that. Sometimes the only connection of people could be something, the only connection of people to the deen could be something they think is a part of the deen, but they don't know it may not be. If you take it out, you've taken the entire deen out rather than replacing it or asking them to learn about something that you feel is more correct and you might be surprised they might come to you with knowledge that you did not have this is also something you need to realize and this is why nobody can say that i have all knowledge we will keep on learning right up to the end myself included every day we learn things that are sometimes that which we didn't know before Every day we learn things we didn't know before. The idea of learning is to be able to understand one another, to be able to respect one another, to be able to tolerate one another. You see the Christians going to the church. That's a different faith. We get along with them. You see the Jews going to the synagogues. That's a different faith. We get along with them. You see the Hindus going to the mandir. That is a different faith. We get along with them. You see the Muslims coming to the masjid. We don't get along with them. It's a reality. Why? Because we have something in our heart. No, they don't do what I do. So going back to what we were talking about, some of the panelists, Sheikh Fakhruddin and the others were making mention of how important it is to understand and acknowledge difference of opinion. Examples were given of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. We know the examples. The problem is we don't practice upon it. When we have a difference, we won't allow him to do this and we will do something else. I recall someone saying, you know, these people don't love the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because they don't get up for the Mawlid, for example. They don't do the Salami. As we heard, everyone celebrates the birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is nobody on earth who is a Muslim who can say that I don't celebrate the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But that celebration takes different forms. And there is, like we said, valid difference of opinion. Valid meaning it's coming from the beginning and it is a valid difference. There are people who believe that my celebration should be fasting on a Monday because he was born on a Monday because the Prophet says that was the day I was born on, for example. So for them, it's every Monday. So for some, it's every month. For some, it's every year. For some, subhanallah, the entire living of theirs is a celebration of the birth of Rasulullah because we are Muslimin. So the whole living is a celebration of the birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For some, they may want to, you know, chant or they may want to sing 
Some of those songs may be acceptable with you. Some may not be acceptable with you. Some the scholars may have spoken about. Some they may not have spoken about. In all honesty, if we were as an ummah ready to understand that we do have a difference whereby let the people do what they believe is correct. You do what you believe is correct. Do not compel someone to do what you do before you respect them. This is something important. Do not compel someone to do what you do before you believe that you need to respect them. I was recently in one of the countries where they make eight units of salah and they walk away. And in my mind, I thought to myself, we make 20. Whoever wants to walk out at eight, they are free to walk out. Is there any hatred against you? You walked out. Did I ever say these people are this and that? There are some who don't have knowledge, who start swearing. And there are some who might be connected to knowledge, who use bad words to refer to someone who firmly believes that, you know, this is a sunnah. You believe it, alhamdulillah. You can walk off. It's fine. I will not walk off. I will continue because I believe I must complete it to where the imam completes it. And I believe 20 was established by Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. If that is the case, leave me alone. Let me complete it. Respect me for what I have chosen. I'm your brother. Look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. We spoke about the difference regarding Banu Quraidah. We spoke about other differences. I have so many others that I can give you the example of the lashing of a person who is a drunkard. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu used to lash 40. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu disagreed strongly, but they loved each other. When he became the Khalif, one of the things he did, he increased it to 80. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu disagreed. He said, how can you do 80 when the Prophet sallam lashed 40? So he loved his predecessor and his companion when he was there. As soon as he became the Khalif, he changed it back to 40. And guess what happened? Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu disagreed. He wanted it to go back to 80. So he didn't change it. Obviously, he didn't make a noise. He didn't start labeling, but he said, no problem. He's the Khalif. Let it happen that way. The day he became the Khalif up to today, it's sitting at 80. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And he gives a beautiful example, but that's not part of our topic. So my brothers and sisters, we need to realize when someone does something and someone does not do something, you believe something is correct. Alhamdulillah. Someone believes something is wrong. Alhamdulillah. Like we spoke about the organ transplant, for example, that is a valid example, but the examples go even beyond where in our own lives, do we really respect someone who does not agree that organ transplant is permissible? I had a doctor recently who almost wanted to argue to the degree that, you know what, you have to promote this. And I said, you know what? There is legitimate difference of opinion, proper, solid. Some say this body is an amana. It's from Allah. You're not supposed to. Well, why do we receive and we don't give? We receive because it's available. That's why. And we don't give because we believe it's an amana from Allah. The day it's not available, we won't be able to receive either. But by that time, there will be synthetic organs maybe that we might be able to use. Already we have hips and we have hip replacements that are not actually transplant, but it's a replacement because they've made it. So technology may advance to that. If not, you might die 10 years earlier. People say, but you know, how could you be so bad? Well, there is another opinion that permits it. Let, let it be. I'm not going to argue with it, but I may discuss it in a very respectable way. The beauty is regarding the members of the public, regarding the members of the public, like we are seated here today, we need to learn to protect our tongues from saying that which is evil about one another. If you want to discuss a matter, discuss it with respect. If you would like to know about the differences, they are valid. Look, we are seated here today. Amongst us, we will have differences of opinion without a shadow of a doubt. But the respect of one another has made us come together today on this forum to say the Ummah, we must protect ourselves from what is happening in the rest of the globe. People started calling each other kafir and they started killing each other. We will not allow that to happen with us. We will not allow that to happen with us. Be careful. And that's why we are here. It's a responsibility on our shoulders to say it must never get to killing. You might think it won't, but if you start with bad words, that's the beginning of a light. You know what's happening in Naizna and in other places. May Allah grant us the extinguishing of the flames and whatever else there is there. But those type of flames, if they are physical, eating trees, they are bad. What if they are eating the hearts of the mu'mineen? And the flame is raging sometimes in the month of Ramadan. So learn to love people. 
I was very, very happy to hear, and it's absolutely important to hear some of my panelists here make mention of how we should never discount the good done by someone. Take a look, for example, at, and I'm just, I just thought of it right now, Abdul Basit Abdul Samad, rahmatullahi alayhi. He is a master in recital. You cannot deny that. I cannot just discount him because I believe he didn't have a beard. But it happens. Some people are saying this. Astaghfirullah. Yet you have to take from him what he gave. The people you learned from, I learned from, they may have one or two weaknesses or they may be following an interpretation that may not be exactly yours. Remember, watch your tongue. You must benefit from what they have given the ummah. So many of the ulama of the ummah, they have belonged to totally different sects, but they came with hadith and fiqh and Quran and tafsir, and we're taking from them the good that they have definitely given. Wallahi, we have. Wallahi, we have. And the main purpose of today is to be able to guide the masses as to how to interpret the difference because the differences are not really going to go anywhere. They're going to remain. But how do we live with these differences? We need to realize, my brothers and sisters, I'm going back to the same point. Let us speak good about one another behind our backs. Wallahi, we will resolve the matter. You have something to say. I promise you, you will find good in your brother or your sister to say. Why do we just find the bad? And even if we want to disagree, we do so with absolute respect. We do so with absolute respect. My brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in Surah Al-Hujurat, calls us brothers. <inaudible> Indeed, the mu'minun, they are all brothers. So what shaitan does, he tries to make you think, but he's not a mu'min, but he's not a mu'min, but he's not a mu'min. This is what shaitan does. And we start calling people, Kuffar. And I'm using the term because it's happening a lot today. You know, if you were to sit and look at social media, the way people call each other Kuffar is actually becoming a joke. And the way people insult, to insult others is something totally unnecessary. That is the root of disunity is insult. Did you know that? The root of disunity is insult. You can write it down, frame it in gold and stick it up in your lounge. The root of disunity is insult. If you are to insult people, you will definitely create a lot of hatred. You will create hatred. Take a look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. We love them, subhanallah. If someone were to insult them, all we are saying is, please don't insult them. If you disagree with someone, don't insult. Do not insult. For us, that which is so, so high in the eyes of people such as Allah and His Rasul and His Messengers Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Alayhi Wasallam Jami'an such as the Sahaba radiallahu anhum such as so many other beautiful places like Mecca and Medina if someone was to insult the place you know I've seen Astaghfirullah Astaghfirullah some images that people draw of the Kaaba and they try to put a pig on it A'udhu Billah they try to superimpose things to do what? to insult us so that we develop hatred to the degree that we get to a point beyond repair. We will become angry, won't we? We have become upset. They make cartoons of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Astaghfirullah, thinking that they are going to insult him. They cannot. He was perfect. He was the best of creation. You cannot insult him by trying that. You're insulting yourself, actually. You cannot insult Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the perfect creation. Allah says, Subhanallah, inna kafayna kal mustahzi'een. We have protected you from those who try and mock. They can't mock at you. It's, it's, it's too much. It's a mockery about themselves, actually. But they do this in order to insult so that we can become violent. We can become emotional. We will become emotional, but we will control, inshallah. We will try and deal with the matter. We will tell them, do not do this. We will keep on telling them, this is insulting. We will raise it intellectually, but we will not stoop as low as them. Because Allah says, Do not insult those who are calling out to gods besides Allah. Now, here we're not talking about Allah and His Rasul. We're not talking about the other messengers. We're not talking about the holy places. We're talking about the idols or the people who worship idols and gods besides Allah. Allah warns us because of this matter of being able to live in peace. Allah says, do not insult those gods or the people who worship those gods. Do not insult them. 
Because if you do so, it will have a skittle effect. They will then insult Allah without knowledge. Who would have caused it? Our insults. That's where I say, and from the beginning, and I'm going to repeat it for the fourth time, my brothers and sisters, we need to protect ourselves from insulting one another. And like I say, that's the core of today's message. Let us protect our tongues. We say good things about one another. We protect, inshallah, ourselves from the harm of one another. And we will definitely be able to create unity without that uniformity. Because like I said, uniformity is something impossible when it comes to the creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us diverse but indeed, we will definitely be able to get along with one another by understanding that each one has a right similar to ours. And each one loves the Prophet wasallam in his own way. And each one loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all want Jannah to firdaus We all want Jannah. We all want to be in the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us together with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah to firdaus And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us all together in Jannah. Trust me, Jannah is so wide, so broad. It has enough place for all of us by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah gather us there. Forgive our sins. Aqulu qawli hadha.